This is how we make the moonshine. It's bent good, whoever bent it, didn't it? Yeah. Bent it Can't damn it, good. Well, this must be my girl. Danielle. Henry. You did make it, didn't you? I did. How you doing? You right on time. Right on time. It's good seeing you again. Good to see you. Oh, it's been a while. It has been a while. I met Danielle Parton down in Tennessee. She's Dolly Parton's niece. We were judges at Master Distiller. Got that little bite. It's the internal hug I was needing. <laughs> I mean, this girl has done a lot of stuff in her lifetime. Kenny, how you doing? I have my own distillery, so I don't distill in the woods, but I've come from a long line of moonshining, so I really want to learn the authentic ways to running this liquor. I didn't get to learn from my grandfathers and my great-grandfathers. They're not around to teach me what to do, what not to do, so I want to fill in the gaps of what I don't know. What you been up to? Submarine it, you know that? Just submarine it. Submarine it, we love those submarines. <laughs> That's awesome. I was so fascinated with his submarine stills because it's so different from everything that I have ever seen or worked with myself. Best thing to do is for you to actually see one. I would love to. We'll show you, girl. Arguably nobody knows more about it than they do. And so I just bug him to death and he finally agreed to let me come up. Do you realize we've never taken a woman to one of our steel sites? No wonder you've never. been arrested. <laughs> Danielle, I'm gonna take you over here to a spot we made look at years and years ago. Oh, good. It's so refreshing to get someone like Danielle that comes in here and she truly wants to learn the art, the craft, the way it was done in the old days. And I appreciate people like that. It just seems so different from everything I'm used to working with. I love this when you see it. If one of those roosters gets on your butt, You'll know it. I just torment my grandmother's rooster and get it to chase me. Those things can get pretty quick. I was a little boy. I had one jump on me and it pecked me. Uh -huh. I had to let another gun it off of me. <laughs> <laughs> How much liquor you guys have been made on this property? It's a lot. A lot. A little graveyard out here, ain't it? Mm. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? We this is it. an old place. There ain't no doubt about that. Uh -huh. How old do you think this stuff is that's here? You can tell by the barrels. Look how big the nails in them are. Mm. It's the 70s. If you look at those tops on those things, it's called mm -hmm. what you call a keyhole cut. The law would come in and cut them a couple different directions, and then they had those picks, would pick those holes in it. But we would come in and weld that stuff back up yeah. and use it again. And then they mm -hmm. got pissed off of that, so they started dynamite and blowing, blowing them up. Blowing Aww. them into splinters. Nothing you could do then. During Prohibition, when sky-high demand for illegal liquor outstripped supply, moonshiners in Franklin County, Virginia, swiftly responded with an innovative new still, the submarine pot. Named for its resemblance to a modern submarine, these 800-gallon pots industrialized the making of illegal shine and quickly gave liquor makers the capacity to quench America's growing thirst. Made on the cheap by wrapping a metal sheet around two wooden side panels, they could be produced at a fraction of the cost of a traditional copper pot or turnip still. The low price tag also meant moonshiners could ditch their stills without suffering a huge loss if their site was raided by the law. The prevailing wisdom of building a submarine pot was that it only took one run to cover the initial investment. After that, it was pure profit. A century later, it takes only a short hike in the hills of Franklin County before encountering one of these relics of a bygone era. How hard would it be to make one of these now? How long has it been since you made one? You think we ever forget? Why do? Right there. I would love to go through the process of making them. And... Ooh, ooh. You'd be taking all that knowledge back to Tennessee. I won't tell nobody. <laughs> That's what they all say. Now I'm just pulling your leg. Draw a few things up, see what size you're looking for. <laughs> this stuff's going to become a steel, eh? I can carry some of them. You yeah, take this. Don't be doing that. Lay it right beside that. Now she'll be cussing me in a minute. I got a feeling you can handle it. I had never even heard of a submarine steel before I met Henry. I'm so fascinated with it. No, these are wider. Might two of these might do it. I'm just excited to learn the authentic 
moonshiner's way. Even though I have family members that moonshine, I wasn't taught that. The way the still operates compared to what I've ever seen, this is just a whole nother education and a knowledge I can't get anywhere else. It's amazing to look at this stuff and see that it's gonna turn into a still. We get both sets of sides out of it. Danielle, she's an amazing woman. <laughs> she's got her own distillery. She flies for the military. It's a military grip. <laughs> Is that good enough? That's good. How did you get into the military flying anyway? I mean, that's that's a heck of a darn thing. I mean, whew. I've been in 17 and a half years, and I still don't know how I got in this man's Air Force. It started, believe it or not, I went on and became a flight attendant. It didn't take me long to figure out the flight attendants and pilots had the same lifestyle, but pilots had the far better income. So I started talking to these guys from the Tennessee Air National Guard, and they said, well, if you're going to ever learn to fly, you need to go guard. It's best kept secret in the Air Force for learning how to fly. So I was almost 30th at the time, and they told me I was too old, I was never gonna fly. That's too old? Yes. But at the time, you could go to Air Force pilot training without an age waiver, as long as you were there on or before your 30th birthday. I started pilot training on my 30th birthday. <laughs> I was older than everyone in the squadron, and I was hired into the 105th as a pilot on the C-5 and the C-130s, and they sent me to pilot training. 130's my baby. It will always be my favorite airplane. And you say you went to Iraq? I have been to Iraq, I've been to Afghanistan, I've been to Pakistan, I've been to a lot of the stands. They and try to shoot you down when you flying over? I have been shot at, yeah. When I was in Pakistan, ground control on the radio would not talk to me because I was a woman. Different world, isn't it? It is, it's a totally different world. Unbelievable. Danny, you gonna mark us over? Yes, sir. You know, she's a self-made woman. <laughs> Make it work. That's exactly right. She fell in there, grabbed the drill, grabbed the hammers. You know, we're not building it for her. We're building it with her. It won't make a damn nice deal, man. I've never made any look around a woman. Lines right up, don't it? I think it looks good. She's got an awesome personality. All right, we can do it. And she don't mind pitching on in and helping you. Tell you the truth, she do a whole lot more than a lot of men. I think I need a bigger one. I can make it into a hot tub. Uh -huh. I used to have one on my back porch. How many ladies did it hold? Quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh -huh. I knew I was coming up here to work with two giants in this field of moonshine. Can it, can it, can it. Can you Pull it back. back. Yeah. I'm just so thankful that I have the opportunity to come and learn the craft of making moonshine with two dudes that have served time in federal prison for it. There's not anybody better. Maybe I'll name this thing Submarina. I don't know about that one. What would your ancestors say? Your, your name is still Submarina. They strained their eyes on me a long time ago rolling them. <laughs> The subs are completely different from anything that I have seen. There's so much ingenuity and engineering that goes into it, but there's also an awful lot of delicate craftsmanship. Like I said, hands-on is the way to go. Right, let's get it down here, just get something mashed in then. What kind of mash should we do? I have been thinking about one. Every moonshine's got her own little recipes. We got a surprise for her. All right. I think it's gonna make some good liquor. Awesome. <laughs>